Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome to another episode of Retro Flashback, showcasing gaming's roots for a new generation. Today we're going to be taking a look at the third game in the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Collection for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. And this is another very early title in Capcom's history that I'd actually never heard of before this collection came about. It, I'm assuming it was popular back in its day, but you remember Capcom for a lot of different games from like 1984, stuff, you know, like 1942 and things like that. But this is Pirate Ship Higamaro, which is a really weird name for, uh, for a title, but it's really cool, mechanically very unique, and it... It's a lot of fun to play, actually. This really, really surprised me. So, we're going to show this off to you here. And I, I quite enjoy this. So, yeah, this is an, uh, another early Capcom title. Uh, as The last two games we looked at, uh, which were Volgus and Sun Sun, were actually Capcom's first two games ever. I don't know if this was their third game or not. I should really check those things before I start recording. But it's a really kind of unique thing. It's another score attack game, of course, it's arcade, and it's sort of giving you a little bit of a mechanical breakdown here, and we'll show you what this is. Whoops. And this is really neat. It's a game where there is a lot of score chance opportunities. So, we'll show you what this is here. So, this is just Lesson, which it just shows you what it is. So, your objective is to kill enemies by hitting them with barrels. Like that. I'm kind of gaming this lesson a little bit. You can actually maximize your score in that lesson by chaining those enemy kills together. So, here we are. We are on, apparently, the deck of a ship that gets infested with these crazy enemy dudes. So your objective is to take out all of these opposing pirates, and the way you do that is by smashing them with barrels. And you can get barrels by picking them up. You can pick up any of the barrels in the level. And you have to chuck them at enemies and hit them with them in order to score points. So it's a pretty simple concept, but there's a lot of really unique scoring opportunities in this game. Oh, just picked up an invulnerability item, that's uncommon. So I actually did not maximize that level at all, and I'm going to show you why that is. So, you can take enemies out individually, or as you saw in the earlier level, you can do something like that, where you chain them together, and taking out more enemies with a single barrel will result in substantially higher score. You can also go to, you'll see there's these various barrels in the level that are flashing, and when you take those out, they drop different kinds of fish, and you saw those in the little attract screen there. And those these fish will yield different point values for each one, and in later levels, you get different kinds of fish, which yield different types of point values. And there are also invulnerability pickups you can grab. And the more fish you grab in a level, in some cases, the higher the actual point values will be. And if you want to sort of max out your score in a level, what you want to do is get all of these flashing barrels if you can. You don't have to, but you will certainly maximize your score by doing that. And you'll also see that there's this sort of uh, technical or dream coat pirate who spawns in and goes around the level, and you can never fully eliminate him. So you can take him out for high uh, high point value, and you'll all you do is knock him out of the out of play for a little while. So he will eventually come back. But again, you can min max your score by not only emptying out all of these colored barrels and grabbing the sweet sweet fishies that lie inside. But you can also take out this Technicolor Pirate, which you don't actually have to, but if you do... Oh, sweet, got an extra life. But if you do take him out, you'll get extra points, and you can do it multiple times, which will allow you to stack your score up really high. And that's sort of what you want to do. You want to try to get as much as you can out of each level. And I really like the idea that this game encourages you to actually stay in levels longer to get better score. You even get score just from for breaking barrels without actually hitting anybody. You can hit a guy with... You can, t you can take a barrel, break it, and still get 50 points. Not a lot of points, but if you're a really crazy person, you can actually 
clear an entire level and clear an entire play field of all the barrels, which is... I don't think I'd ever want to do that, but I'm sure there are world record holders who have done such things. So, I got out of that. The thing with this game is that it gets very, very hard very, very quickly, as most early Capcom arcade games did, because, well, they were arcade games, you know, designed to suck as much money out of you as possible. So what I'm actually going to do here, I'm going to do in this what I did in the last game, because I'm getting, I won't say good, but competent at this game, I'm going to keep playing it in score attack mode, so that if I manage to land myself a good score during this video, I can upload it to the leaderboards, because why not, right? I just wanted to go into arcade mode because you get the little intro there, which you don't get in the score attack mode. The score attack mode assumes you already know what you're doing. I like the fact, too, that this gives you a little tutorial where it's like, hey, we're going to start you off with just three simple enemies, three barrels, and you're invulnerable, so have fun. I like that. It doesn't just throw you right in with no understanding of what's happening. And so you'll also see that some of the enemies are will actually jump into barrels and come around in those, and they can still hurt you even when they're in the barrels. And your goal is doubly... You have sort of double objectives in that case, because you hit if you hit them with a barrel when they're in a barrel, all you do is knock them out of it. You don't actually kill, kill the enemies. So in those situations... So you see they'll jump in and out of the barrels, but if you want to get an enemy that's in a barrel, and you'll see that they're much more aggressive in coming after you when they're in a barrel, you have to... Man, I'm bombing this up nice. You actually have to knock them out of the barrel and then take them out. So it's sort of a two-stage process. And I like the fact that they don't just all run for barrels and they'll actually get in and out of them. It's not like, oh, uh, once they're in a barrel, they're, they're just twice as hard and that's really all there is to it. I like the fact that the game will... That they will actually sort of mix things up a little bit. And I like that extra layer of challenge it adds. And... Again, more score maxing opportunities. Like, this game exploits the sort of greed factor of score chase games better than a lot of others I've ever seen, to be honest with you. Okay, let's try this again and not suck so bad, shall we? Really good score attack games. Sorry, no record. No, let's not document that. The best arcade games and score tag games in general are games that not only have a really good scoring system in terms of how they distribute points, but also reward being greedy. If you want to progress far into this game, you can by simply making a beeline to take out all the enemy pirates as fast as possible and letting that be that. But the, the best games are the ones that give you multiple opportunities to... to exploit a risk reward to work to but make things purposely harder for yourself but in the interest of getting that better score and getting that better position on the scoreboard and this does that in an extremely good way because you have the fish barrels you have opportunities to try to line enemies up so that you can ah so that you can uh take them out in a chain. You can try to stick around a level longer to take out that Technicolor Pirate multiple times if you want to max your score out that way. It's all optional, but you are incentivized to do that if you want to play the game that way. If you just want to see all the levels, sure, you can do that if you like. And if you're particularly skilled, you'll be able to see all the levels and max out your score at the same time. Some of the top-end leaderboard replays of this game are berserk. Like, they're clearly done by guys who just know how the AI works, just know how to sort of manipulate the formula in the best way possible. And I mean, I've never been good enough at any game to do that. I was at one point good enough at Pac-Man... What was it? Pac-Man Jr.? We used to have a place I used to work, we used to have an arcade machine in it that, that I think was Pac-Man, either Pac-Man Jr. or Pac-Man Plus. And I was exceptionally good. I played that game so many times that I could completely game my way to a maximum score through like the first five levels, I want to say. But that's the only game I've even been remotely that good at. But that's what keeps me coming back to this. This is one of the games I've played the most in this collection, actually, when I haven't been recording. And that's because... 
the way the scoring system is designed in this is really, really good. So many games just either don't put in enough greed score attack opportunities, or they just have a poor scoring system. Also, yes, when you're invulnerable, you can just touch enemies and knock them out. You don't have to hit them with barrels. But so many games don't give good score attacking opportunities, or the scoring system is so poorly designed that you can either game it and exploit it, or you just have to play it in a way that's not entertaining in order to, to get the maximum score. This game actually gets more fun the more you try to utilize that greed factor. And that's really key when you're designing a fun arcade game, a fun score attack game, is you have to make it more fun to take risks than it is to not take risks. And that's what this game is. This game would be fine enough on its own if you wanted to just... Uh, to, if you wanted to just play it through, through the levels. It, it's still good enough that way, I guess, if you want to put it that way. But it rewards you... Alright, high point deck. These are cool. It's a, it's a bonus level, but it's a bonus level... It's not a dedicated bonus stage, and I pretty much bombed it. So the way that, that deck works is really, really cool. It's nothing but Technicolor Pirates, so you can keep playing the level as long as you can keep yourself alive. Oh, I didn't... Oh, okay. I thought when you died in that level you were screwed, but no. So you can keep going after these guys, and... Everything in the fish barrels is high point values. So you're actually picking up... I guess those are corn cob pipes. Oh, jeez. Yeah! I'm actually doing really well at this level. And... These are all worth crazy high point values, as you can see. And I've, I've actually never gotten all the way through this before. Let alone owned it like this. Yeah! But I think... Okay, so you just have to take out the pirates a certain number of times. I thought your goal was to get all the high point barrel items. Now, I will say one thing. You'll see that I how badly I screwed that up there. You'll also see there at the top, under the top score, is little representations of faces. Those are how many enemies you have to take out in the level. So, that will go down every time I take out one of these pirates with a barrel, and I have to get that many out in order to pass on. The one thing I will say about this game, very much like with Sun Sun, is that this is a game that does not benefit from the Xbox 360 controller. I'm trying to play it with the D-pad, because this game is just an, a mushy mess with the analog stick, and it's better with the D-pad, but not great. That's going to be a pretty good score attack, I think. Alright. Yeah, that's that's the only other problem, is that this is best played, again, with either a third-party controller, the updated 360 controller that has the twisty D-pad, or... Oh, nice. Or with an arcade stick if you have access to one. I really need to get mine back from Styles because that's the that's the way to play this game very much. Yeah, with the 360 controller, it is. There have been many times that I have died in this game. You know, I'm not particularly great at this game, but I have definitely died multiple times in this game because of the 360 D-pad, which is a real shame. It's ugh, it's just not good. And this, not all, not all games in this package are detracted by that, but this one is definitely among them because sometimes you've got to make, especially in later levels, I imagine, you have to make some quick, tight turns that require a little bit of precision and, and snappy timing, and the 360 controller does not lend itself for that at all when you're using digital movement. If you were really quick on the draw with your thumbs, I imagine you could probably have a bit better luck with doing this with the analog stick, but my thumbs just don't move fast enough to take best advantage of that, unfortunately. So just be warned about that, but you can get used to it, and you, you can still get yourself into a pretty decent place with this game. I mean... If you, if you know the limitations of the controller you're working with, it's not really that bad. You can make most things work. I'm just... 
not that good and not that patient, what can I say? I'm a fairly impatient dude, to be honest with you. But I am really enjoying this game. Of all the games in the pack so far, I have put the most time into this, and I'm really actually having a, a lot of fun with this. I'm quite surprised I, I never heard of this game before now. It may not have been actually that popular back in the day when it came out, but it's uh, a really good, really good arcade game, really good score attack game. So many of these early Capcom titles were clearly just designed by people who got score mechanics and were very passionate about doing them in an easy to pick up but very meaningful way that really rewarded a certain type of play, which was really the type of play that early arcade games went after. Designing a scoring system when you think about it really sounds easy, but it's it's quite hard to do it in a in a good way, and some of these early Capcom designers really nailed it. This is definitely a case of that. I think this is one of the better games in Capcom Arcade Cabinet, to be honest with you, and yeah, if you if you like score attack, this is absolutely a top-tier example of, of how you do it right. But yeah, that is Pirate Ship Higemaru, published and developed by Capcom in 1984. We are looking at the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Edition on the Xbox 360. It is also available on the PS3. And it is a darn good score game, and I would highly recommend taking a look at it. My name has been Parallax Abstraction. Thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.